Welcome to Niturgy. Uh, this is our second episode of Niturgy. I'm in Valgos. I'm your host. I'm Duke of Nico. I'm Jen of Synaptic Stitches. And I'm Scott Strong Wallace of Great Scott Knitting and Mount Carmel Yarns. Last time we finished the show with our challenge and people are probably very curious <laughs> to see what we came up with. So who wants to start? I guess I can start. Go. <laughs> mm, okay. So the technique was beads and the motif uh, is a cockroach. <laughs> and, and the movie I picked was um, Hope's Pride. So I used um, purple as a background. Oh, do you want to see my sketch first? Yeah, I think it would be great to see the whole process because I'm very curious and I think many people would like to see how do you get to the idea behind the final result. So this is the sketch <laughs> of a, cock, uh, it's a cockroach uh, and I didn't want the cockroach to be gross so I, I'm going to use a rainbow buff color <laughs> and using shiny beads to make it look shiny and oily, oily looking. I'm really these, curious. <laughs> These legs will be duplicate stitched. Okay. <laughs> so here's the final result. Oh my God. That looks I great. It. I love it. Oh, so that's I, so cool. I use Intaja for the main body of the cockroach. And these eyes are beads. And also these kind of green, not quite neon green, but kind of shiny green is also beads. <laughs> oh, that was really well done. Was it hard to get to the idea? No, it wasn't hard. Actually, re-watching the episode was very helpful uh, because I could pick up some other techniques that I want, wanted to incorporate. In, into this, like in Taja, we talked about it, and Rainbow Bath, uh, Jen mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and variegated yarn that we didn't, yeah. none of us knew what to do with it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was, oh, yeah, it was a good stash busting, <laughs> too. Only it's just a swatch, but I was able to use the variegated uh, yarn, color yarn. Yeah. So it was fun. Uh, did you have things that like didn't work out? Uh, yeah, how, how many times did you have to redo it? <laughs> I, I didn't have to redo it. Um, so I made this first, uh, but I also tried to make another swatch with, with a letter, letter <laughs> and a burglar. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't quite work out. Uh, so I kind of. Oh, that's so cool! It's a ladder. Yeah, so cool. The ladder. You could always uh, embroider the burglar burglar over it. <laughs> yeah, but the column is kind of a little uneven and loose, so I didn't like it. Very I love much. it. I guess it's this unfinished object, UFO. I um, decided that the thing that made most sense to me to make into a, a swatch of all the scary things was a cat coming and stealing my yarn because you know they're a big part of the show too <laughs> uh, um, so um and my technique was embroidery and uh the movie i chose was spirited away so here's my swatch and after discussing last time that i don't like weaving ends I intentionally left all these. <laughs> intentionally left my money left. Perfect. Um, and so I, I did some YouTubing and checked out some different um, embroidery techniques and tried out a few different things. So like the cat's paw is done with one technique and the different like yarn things are done in different 
different stitches that I found um, and I intentionally like left some some frayed ends here like a big loop as if they caught their claw in the yarn and yanked out <laughs> yarn because I find myself like constantly like messing with my sweaters as they've pulled chunks out of them uh, <laughs> so yeah that. it totally represents the whole story yes yeah that's, that's what I came up with it's not not the prettiest thing but it was you know no but I think this part is amazing for uh to repeat in a pattern like yeah. if you want to do even a yoke or or at the bottom or something to repeat it it's cute I'm a knitter I'm not a embroiderer so you know the the skills took a, a few minutes to get used to but it's not not too hard how does embroidery play with the tension of the garment itself I was like being careful not to pull like so especially in the paw it would have there were times when I was realizing I was pulling this the embroidery too tight and it could cause puckering in the tension so you have to be intentional about not over pulling it and I think maybe if you did a lot of embroidery like prior to blocking and then you wanted to stretch whatever it was that might impact it but it doesn't seem to make have made too but, much of a difference for me yeah I mean it looks great how much of it did you know in advance and how much did you just add it I knew that I wanted to do like the cat's paw and I wasn't sure if I was going to like try and put like actual like claw marks in it or something somehow or I just sort of freeformed the stitches for the you know random bits of yarn. This is a thing that just drives me crazy that they'll always like pull and I, I did not just pull a loop of yarn in the actual swatch I added this <laughs> on afterward. Um, I think it's great that you that you put the things that you hate like in in it in a yeah in yeah this this is my experience in life. So. <laughs> now, of course, Duke, Duke's friend here is is taking lessons on what to do. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Okay, so I pull where? <laughs> yeah. My inspirations were beadwork, spiders. And the movie was um, uh, Corpse Bride. So I had remarked at la on last episode that I did have some yarn that was already soaking and waiting for color. Um, so as soon as the episode was over, I grabbed my colors, which were a blue, a black, and a, a deep purple. And I dyed my skeins of yarn. Wow, that's pretty. So they are I really, I really love how they play with each other. There's still some really light colors, but there's the purples and the blues and the blacks, which definitely come from that image. So then it came to the actual, how do you knit a spider? So I did some, some Googling around that and I saw a lot of washcloths where they do the uh, knit and purl versions where they just kind of use the, the purl bumps to, to create that texture that looked like a spider. I thought about spider webs, um, but I wanted something more um, tactile. It's something that popped off the swatch. So um, I saw a couple other things when I was Googling that worked out. One was, is a pattern called the butterfly stitch, or it's also sometimes a bow knot stitch. I don't know if you can see it there, yeah. but you can see, basically it's some, um, you, you do some slip stitches with the yarn in front. And then um, on one of the passes, you, pick those strands up and knit them into the next, into that middle stitch. So it kind of brings them up together. So I used, instead of five, which is on this one, or three, which is on this one, I did four, so there'd be eight legs. <laughs> it does look like a spider. For sure. Yeah, it, it, it really does. And so I was like, okay, great. Um, so we had just done bobbles um, on the, uh, Perfect here on the uh, you know on the Stephen West so I was like so great. that's the body so the, the the bubble would be the body and the beadwork is the head so as I drew up those strands 
so that they would you know pucker them up to make like look like legs that's where i inserted b so i started off with this is the backside um just a a random uh mini skein that i had just to kind of get practice with the concept and it's really kind of dark, but it's hard to see. Yeah, Hopefully they are little the spiders. One. Yeah. So here's the actual <laughs> one that I did. Oh, cool. So you see the little <laughs> bead that is the the head, and then you see that mm -hmm. this you know body popping off of it, and you see the little yeah. legs. So I'm like, ah, oh, it's it works out. <laughs> it does. It really looks like spiders, <laughs> which is Fun. creepy. Which is so creepy. I hate it. <laughs> it's so cool, but it's so creepy. So I am I am set for anyone's design for next year's you know uh, Halloween, Halloween sweaters. We can do you know spiders and a motif of webs yeah. or whatever. Do you have to go get beads? Yeah, I I went and got beads. So I have tons of beads that I may or may never ever use again. <laughs> Those are big beads. These are big the beads. Dimension. So I, I went with DK. Yeah. And how did you thread the bees into the yarn? A very small crochet hook. Crochet hook. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, basically take the stitch, you're gonna put, you know, pick up the bead, put this, um, then pick up the stitch and then slide it on and then put it back on your needle. Oh, okay. Did you know how to do it or did you have to learn it? that's one of those things that i i mean i have considered doing beads in the past and so i've you know watched and done a little research in the past about different ways of doing it and for me that's uh, it's always seemed like the easiest um especially for random bead placement okay want to see mine <laughs> Yes. yes, of course. <laughs> well, I'm I'm the the nerd that took the <laughs> took it a little too far. I had the broken glass, the cockroach, and the ghost. So I took the cockroach out, <laughs> and I think the broken glass was was the, the thing that I wanted to be the center of the piece. I chose the corpse bride, but I wanted to switch because I knew that Duke was doing the corpse bride and Scott was doing. So I decided to go for it. I said that if, if I'm going to do a swatch, then maybe I'll just do a hat because it's <laughs> like <laughs> a bigger swatch. <laughs> so I started with the broken glass. And I, I didn't like the lines, so I decided to, here I <laughs> tried to put, I thought maybe, ah, I had a, cockroaches in there. <laughs> yeah, because I had embroidery, so I said, okay, I'm going to put the cockroach with embroidery, but then I didn't like it as well. So I decided maybe I'll go with the, this thing, and, and then I looked at it and I said, they are all the same, like a line with a broken glass. And that's what I don't like about it. And I'm just trying to change the same thing, but I'm repeating the same thing. And then I decided I want to make it just to break the line and to put a big broken glass. Oh. Yeah. So then I said, okay, that's cool because it looks like something broke in the head. And then, I said, okay, so I put ghosts around it. And then I have ghosts with a, like, it's like a broken window of a haunted castle. So I met a lot of ghosts. <laughs> yeah, and a little more ghosts. And so eventually I got the hat. Wait, wait, wait for it. So that's the broken glass. Oh my gosh. And that I made is so the, cool. Yeah, I made the embroider, embroidery over it. And then you have the little ghosts. That and, looks fantastic. Yeah, and the ghosts, <laughs> I embroidered just the faces with a, <laughs> with this um, fluff yarn. Mm -hmm. So they have these fluff faces and they look really cute. And I used for the for the base, I used variegated yarn because we talked about it. 
I really enjoyed the, the process of doing it. People who dabble in design versus designers. <laughs> <laughs> Just came out. What kind of yarn did you use for the red? Uh, for the red, I held two, two yarns together. One yeah. was merino, fingering merino, and the other one is alpaca, very fluffy alpaca, uh, very thin. So it got this marled effect. Yeah. It, well, it also gives, you know, the, that alpaca would give it that extra sort of extra softness, but the yeah. alpaca on its own would have been too stretchy. I mean, your the hat would have been over the top of your face. It so, is. Uh, it did. Marino, the merino helps give it more structure. Yeah, but but you're right. I didn't expect it because I've never worked with alpaca, but the the hem, I had to sew, I I. I made it. Uh, you doubled it up. Doubled, yeah, but it kept falling. Because <laughs> it kept off. wanting to stretch down. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So I saw it. Uh, I just saw the edge, and um, I I uh, blocked it on a balloon mm -hmm. <laughs> before I did the embroidery. In the previous episode, I said that I don't know what to expect for it. Like, if you can control it or not and how much details it gives it but i realized that before the embroidery it didn't look that well because the embroidery gives it crisp lines like really define it becomes really clear and it adds another layer to the drawing so now after we're done with the previous challenge we're gonna build up for the next challenge and we're gonna have our new topic which is the holidays <laughs> because it's by the time the episode is out we're on december right <laughs> and we're in the holiday spirit how do you get into the the holiday spirit mariah carey <laughs> <laughs> when i play her cds i was raised uh celebrating Christmas. So a lot of it is the music that that identifies with the season. Um, that and the food. I think music is a big thing. My my dad loved choral music. For me, like even though I'm not particularly religious, a lot of the like more traditional, more religiously based Christmas music is like what feels like home to me. Also it's it's really about cooking. Um, and about coming together as a family and using cooking as a way to come together with your loved ones. My family has, you know, the last couple of years said, oh, it's too much work to, you know, make a big meal for the whole extended family. And I say, no, 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 no. I like, if, if no one else wants to do it, I want to do it. Um, I love to cook. That's one of my, uh, my hobbies other than, um, you know, fiber arts. Um, I love baking. I love cooking and, and, making meals for and with my family is a huge part of the holidays. So I took the gift as an element of the holiday spirit. Do you need a gift for the holidays for your friends, families? Yeah, I've been making a lot of ornaments. So yeah. I guess I can give some of them to my in-laws. But they're primarily for my neighbors. Our neighbors seem to you know, give gifts to each other. So we usually get like baked goods or cakes or jam or all kinds of things. But I I returned a favor with knitted stuff. Well, I needed my brother for his birthday last month, uh, slippers. And now I promised for Hanukkah to <laughs> knit the whole family. <laughs> Everyone wants slippers. Did you receive handmade or crafted gifts from friends or family? No. So my mom is also a knitter. So she has she has given me, you know, hand knit scarves and things in the past. But I feel like there's a trend in my life where she decides that 
for no reason that I can discern that like I am better than her at X. And it started with making chocolate chip cookies when I was like 12 years old. She's like, you are now the master of chocolate chip cookies and I'm never making them again. That's your job now. Um, so when I, you know, I, I've received a number of, of hand knit items from her in the past, but when I really got into knitting myself, those stopped. I'm not getting hand knit gifts from her anymore. I don't usually receive a lot of uh, handmade gifts, um, but this year I am definitely, have definitely, future self. <laughs> Um, knitting some things for my coworkers who I just finally met um, at the beginning of November. So I asked them all what their top two favorite colors were because I wanted to dye up some yarn to knit them either some shawls or cowls or some, you know, something. Oh, wow. Uh, so you know, between, between now and when this airs and the next time, you'll probably see some of these things on Instagram. <laughs> so um, one of them was forest green and teal. Oh, wow. So we have a forest green and teal skein. Um, a weather one was pink and white. So we have a pink and white skein. This one is a uh, kind of a fade in that I dyed it in a cake form so that the dye would hit the outside more than the inside. I wonder how would that skein would knit. Would so it'll, really it'll knit up very much like a, a faded yarn in that um, on one end, it's going to be this deep pink. It's going to be this almost red color and it'll knit like that for a while. And then it'll slowly fade into light pinks and then into the almost white section. So it'll, it'll be very much like that, but it will also be speckled um, because of the nature of cake dyeing. You're going to have some of that darker color throughout. I love doing cake dyeing and then knitting things with it because you do get that slower transition of color. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then my th third coworker, her favorites were uh, deep purple and orange. So I have wow. this knit up or, or dyed up for her. So we have a tonal purple and then um, in, on one, in a couple of sections, there's this speckled orange uh spot so amazing. very fun and then for my for my boss um i actually had to dye this one twice because my first attempt didn't turn out well <laughs> it was an actual <laughs> failure that i wound up over dyeing and creating this skein of yarn which is um i mean it's so deep that it's almost black but it's actually purples that were used and then the oranges i don't know kind of got in there making blues and grays and Rick, is there green in there yeah, yeah because of the blues from the purple and the, and the yellows in the orange there's it came out with these green spots and i was like that's not what i want <laughs> i wanted something much more like this so it got over dyed with more purple to uh balance it out a lot more so i'm i'm interested to see how this one knits up it should be very interesting and so, you're gonna do all of this in one month yeah, well, okay, so these are single skeins. These are all DK. So they'll knit up relatively quickly. I have some deep single skein DK patterns um, picked out for, for these. So um, it shouldn't be too bad. Each of those should take about a week. Now for the challenge, I want each of you to tell a story about a special gift because the person or because of the gift or because of the occasion or because of some story behind it. Last year, my husband gave me a new wedding band, which oh, wow. is, it's kind of hard to see. It's all blown out and everything, but you can kind of see diamonds. the diamonds in it. Um, I've never been big on jewelry and 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 that type of thing but getting this piece kind of like started me thinking about well why don't I you know wear more of those types of things so that's kind of my most special gift of, of recent memory so my memorable gift is also a wedding gift but not from my husband but from my sister both my husband and I are into pottery. Uh, we don't 
make pottery, but we love buying, you know, china and dishes and glasses, things like that. So my sister, she had a friend who was a potter in Japan. Uh, so she had him make like a dinner dinner set for us and wow. sent it to us. Um, so the thing I thought of are actually these earrings that I'm wearing. Um, they're just little um, oxidized copper maple leaves or not ivy leaves. Um, and these were um, the first gift my husband, now husband, then boyfriend ever gave me when we first started dating. And we had been walking um, along, we were both in grad school um, and walking down like the main street um, across the school from our university or across the street from our university. And um, I had just looked in a window and seen these and gone, oh, I, I really like those. You know, those are, you know, my style, those are pretty. And he hadn't, you know, said anything or whatever. And then um, my birthday was like two weeks later and he had gone back to the store the next day and like picked out the things that I had pointed out that I said that I liked and sort of the first thing of a gift from him and also showing like that he had that thoughtfulness to like notice when I said what I liked and make a point of it and make sure that he, he got that for me. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My story is a little sad. I was 13 and my grandmother gave me my first jewelry ever. It was a little necklace uh, that opens up and you can, it's really small and you can put like uh, pictures in it. It's, it's old. And I went with it with friends just uh, one afternoon and I came back home and it was gone. And I don't know where it is. She gave me a lot of jewelry af after that, so. <laughs> <laughs> I had them, yeah, in boxes uh, in the closet, <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> Next thing we're going to talk about sharing, because sharing is also something of the holidays. How do you feel about sharing the process of the design? Do you like to share it like in the middle and show the progress or you don't want to show it and just show the finished object? I mean, anyone who looks at my Instagram will realize that I share all through the process. Honestly, I think I would probably post like four or five times a year if all I showed were like the finished <laughs> projects. Um, so if you want to like keep up with what I'm doing, I got to show you in progress things. And I think it's kind of nice to share like, this is what my thought process is, or this is where I am. This is what I'm, how I'm feeling about it. Here's the cowl that I had to rip out five times. And I know there are a lot of designers who sort of very carefully guard their designs and you couldn't possibly, you know, see yeah. anything until it's, it's finally published. And I'd rather, you know, open the door and let you see what I'm working on. For, for like this Stephen Westshaw, I would love to know how he went from uh, this to this from a design standpoint. It's like, right. how long did that take? And what, you know, where, where did you go that you said no? and went somewhere else because he makes he makes doing this look so easy. He makes designing it and knitting it and putting it out there just seem like it's, it. oh, I just decided to design a shawl today. And, you know, <laughs> I am sure that there's so much more behind it than that. Yeah, I'm sure. And also when you need the shawlography, only when it's finished, you really get the whole thing. So that's very interesting how he, like how he puts it all together so well and every, every color palette you do, it works so well. It's, it's does does really... he share the process? Or does he yeah, talk about I've never, I've never seen him share his design process. No, me too. So it'd be really interesting uh, if someone could interview him. Irina. Arena, arena. <laughs> it would be interesting if more designers shared their process. I think there is probably a fear of if you know how the soup is made, you'll make your own and you won't buy mine. But there's also a concept of, for at least for me, of of creating more designers by sharing how it's done and the process you go through. If we want to create a dynamic and growing fiber arts community, I think it's important that we share 
how the soup is made so that the next generation can build on what we've done. I, I agree with, me, with you totally. And I think that my ideas are my ideas. And like my mind is, is close to what I know. But when I see what you do, then it opens my mind. And when you see what I do, it opens your mind. We each give each other something to think about and everyone would take it to his own way. I think our challenge is a good example. Like we all had the same framework. We were, you know, going for the same instructions and all of us came up with very different approaches to like what we were going to try and do. My design process is certainly not a formula. Like it, I don't have a, like, this is exactly what I do. But even if you did, if you gave a formula of here's how to make a design, every person who you gave that to is going to come up with something different. Everyone's mind is different. Everyone has different experiences and different preferences. So like, I think the, the worry of like, oh, someone else is going to take this and like, yeah, so why? Yeah, I don't, I, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> I think there's just so much variation in people's creativity that can still be explored. You even see it with knitters that buy patterns and, you know, make their own adjustments on it. If I see people knit the patterns that I put out and do al alternations and just, I don't know, make the sleeves different or make it's, it's, it's gorgeous in my eyes. A lot of test knitting of other designers' designs and it's a, it's, it's a learning opportunity for me. Uh, I, I don't I don't try to copy their designs or their style, but it's it's like you said, Imbo, how seeing how they do it, it inspires you uh, and gives you ideas. When I started to design, I had no clue, like, where do I begin? And I really looked for designers that show the process because you want to start and you don't even know where to start. And I didn't find many people that really share the process. Sweater designing is so complex and I, I still didn't feel confident enough to design a sweater. You can do it. It's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just once you understand the rules, like armholes, you know, I didn't know how do you know, how long is it, how deep is it, but I just took many books and many patterns and I did average <laughs> calculation yeah. and it worked out, yeah. I have a book, great book by Shirley Payton that teaches right. you how to uh, all, all kinds of component elements of sweater designing yeah i also have uh, melissa lipman's book uh, six thousand sweaters or something like that should i bring it i also think it's a great idea to look for resources that um have more up-to-date information oh, about sizing um because a lot of the original like if you go to like the information, I think from the Craft Yarn Council and some of the other like standardization sizing like uses data that was collected in a survey in the US in the 1950s and bodies have changed. Um, well, and, you know, and, the, and the style of how we wear our clothes has changed. Has changed. So yeah. if you find like newer size charts and um, newer information about how to make garments fit, then you can make things that are a lot more modern and accessible to a broader range of bodies. So here's some books that I find very, very helpful. Is it, is it flipped? Do you no, see it? Perfect. No, I can read it. Oh, okay. So this is top down sweaters and it uh, breaks down like according to like setting sleeves raglan raglan sweaters and you really get charts wait 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 you'll have child size adult size uh and you get charts that just show you uh, it's amazing like uh, on each gauge how many uh stitches you should have and how many rows and it's like a metrics that you can use. And there's the Shirley Payton's book, of course, which is a school. Yeah. That's, Apparently that's the one to get. 
that's really do I have it? that's that's a school yeah like if you want to learn and there's uh this one which is Malay Melissa Lipman's 6,000 pullovers. And again, you have uh, just a matrix of numbers according to gauge, according to sizes. And it really helps if you want to build something. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's just as a base to something. And then you can say, I want it larger, smaller. Um, there for a challenge of this episode yeah what uh, are we designing a sweater <laughs> yeah <laughs> so for next yeah <laughs> in one month it's gonna grow <laughs> no <laughs> okay next challenge question um let's try to think about techniques the chair stitches because it's sharing what I thought is like decreases. Decreases are sharing stitches, like you knit them together, okay. or cables can be like, right? Okay, no, no. I, I think I get where you're headed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm getting it. So there were um, a lot of shared stitches. If you want to kind of think about it in that fashion, slip stitching, you're sharing a stitch from a lower row up to another one. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely I cord is, you know, the, the stitches are, are coming together in a completely different way. Um, definitely the, uh, the welt, because you're having to, you're sharing it back on itself uh, in the fabric. Yeah. So, yeah. So really anything that becomes very much texture related or you know where stitches are going to cross over each other in different ways one could say you're they're sharing a space yeah to create either a, a texture or a a color shift even bubbles right yeah bubbles yeah definitely they share the same stitch and then you... yeah they're sharing a stitch because they're popular and which causes them to give you that that additional texture that additional relief to the the flat space yeah also thinking anything like mosaic knitting or linen stitch or brioche where you're slipping stitches and then working them again in the following row um, or working them with two different colors sort of shares them between different colors or between different different rounds or rows or yeah yeah okay to argue that double knitting very yeah. much shared that, yeah you know, it's uh, in and yang of uh, a design so the front side and the back side are very much connected and shared okay i've made the list because uh, i wrote it down and each of us uh will select one technique <laughs> of course for the next uh, challenge so we have double knitting we have slip stitching we have eye cord we have welts, we have cables, we have bubbles, we have linen stitch, we have mosaic, and we have brioche. This is not about facing your fear, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I can do double knitting because I you like can it. Choose, okay, yeah. so write down double knitting. Jen, what are you going to select? Um, I mean, you give me those options, it's pretty easy for me to jump to doing some brioche cables. <laughs> so, Jen, you're I'm glad right. you're jumping right on those brioche cables. Hey, hey, hey it's what I do. You just, didn't you just put out a hat or be, getting ready to put out a hat that has brioche cables? It went to my tech editor on Thursday, so I, it will be coming out soon. You That's wanna cool. show us? Show us the hat. It's so beautiful. Is it in my bag? Oh, it is. There you go. This is a really sharing stitch. Wow, so cool. <laughs> no, yeah. Jen, I'm going to knit it. I don't know how you did it, but I'm going to get the pattern and I'm going to knit it. Because <laughs> it's... Well, it, it's it'll be available visually, soon. It's visually amazing, really. Thank you. Yeah, it is really stunning. Yeah, Thank you. Stunning is the word. It's more Thank than you. amazing. <laughs> stunning. Yeah, this, is, this was my 
I, I wanted to try three color brioche because, you know, why, why not add <laughs> color in there? Beautiful. Okay, Scott, what's your, uh, what's your uh, selection? Um, I, I think I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with mosaic. Okay. Two colors. Okay. I'm going to go with bubbles. It's cute. <laughs> okay. Last thing we're going to talk about is uh, love. Love. Because love is, uh, <laughs> is uh, the holiday spirit. So where is the line, do you think, between love and obsession? when it gets to do with knitting? Um, okay, so in, in my mind, the first thing that comes up is love would be a deep appreciation for, for whatever, you know, for whatever it is. In this case, you know, knitting and fiber arts. For me, I think over time, I reached a point of deep appreciation. Note, because I began to realize the level of expertise to make things look really well and to look good, things that looked finished. But I think it it did become obsession where it overtook any other love that I had for a craft. I think it became an obsession for me when I realized that's the first thing I think about when I wake up and it's the last thing I do <laughs> before I go to sleep. And also for me to enter a yarn store is like, I can be there for, it's like, all the love, like my heart just <laughs> grows <laughs> when I see the yarn. To me, love of knitting is when you enjoy the act of knitting so much, uh, but you're not obsessed as to like when you notice some imperfection or mistake, you can let it go. But if you're obsessed, you, you want to make it perfect. And if there's, if there's a better way of doing things, you want to know. Um, so to me, I'm obsessed to know more about knitting. And that's why I love watching uh, YouTube shows like Suzanne Bryan. She's obsessed with techniques so um, to me, obsession is the need to know more. Can't get enough of. Yeah, I think for me, it also, the obsession comes in when it's like, I need to knit, like anytime I have five minutes, like if I'm, you know, when I was commuting back and forth to work, I would knit on the bus. I would knit as I walked down the hallway. I had, you know, my, my, gar my project bag looped over my arm and I would knit walking through the hallway and up the stairs to my office. And, you know, I would knit on my breaks. I would knit anytime I had a little, little time here or there. And it, it also, you know, it can get in the way of getting other things done. So there are times when it's just, oh, just one more stitch, just one more row. <laughs> and then I realize, oh, I haven't, you know, fed the cats or washed the dishes or done the laundry or taken care of any of the other things that I need to do in my life because I had to do more knitting. See, sounds familiar. <laughs> I think many of us relate to that. Do you have a, a type of yarn that you love working with? I like all kinds of yarn. I love them all. Yeah. All of my kids. I love all, yes, I love all my children equally. Yeah. <laughs> I spent probably about the majority of my past has been using acrylic yarns because they were cheap and easily accessible. But then the very first time I bought skeins of a merino base yarn, a merino nylon blend, and I was immediately smitten <laughs> with the, the feel of it, the softness, the, the stretch and the bounce of it. I mean, I was like, I didn't realize yarn could be that much of a tactile joy to simply just have it moving through your fingers as you were knitting. Um, it really changed the game for me. I've recently used a merino silk base, which you get that additional softness, but you also get that sheen uh, that it just sort of 
glows as you work with it. Um, using these more natural fibers, there you go. <laughs> using these more natural fibers, it just, it, it has really heightened the game for me. I'm all about the natural fibers. Um, so since I relearned to knit at my local yarn shop, I jumped right over the big box store acrylic. Um, I got put into, you know, local natural merino right from the start. And, um, you know, I hate to say I'm a yarn snob, but I'm a <laughs> yarn snob. Uh, <laughs> and I, I really love natural fibers. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on more of that and getting to play with that. And I also like that working with alternative fibers and alternative sheep breeds, I think also often brings you closer to the farmer and the source of the wool. And you're working more with small brands and supporting other small makers and having more knowledge and understanding about where your products come from and the impact that they have on local communities and on the environment and that sort of thing. And that's something that I also am, you know, happy to have. So <clears throat> Merino wool is my de facto go-to, but I like trying other uh, lesser known breeds. Um, Rambouillet seems to be kind of booming right now. It's like uh, American West region has a lot of that breed. And Ancient Arts yarn, uh, and well, you use their yarn. Right? Is, it's it's in transit. I'm waiting for it to come. Uh, all right. Uh, but ancient arts yarn have some almost like an heirloom old uh, traditional breeds, uh, which is very interesting, uh, very rustic. And the colors that they bring is so different from uh, colors you see in mar merino because their, their natural color is more brownish, I guess. Uh, and yeah, it, yeah. it gives that it gives that a, sort of a, a a deeper tone to a lot of the colors. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love mm -hmm. it. Those dyers with ancient arts, they're magicians. Yeah, uh, how they get those colors, uh, and those mixtures, it, it baffles me. Like Scott, I started with acrylic yarns, and mm -hmm. I didn't understand like the difference. To me, it was yarn, but now like my parents are in Greece and my mom called me and said, uh, oh, look, and she sends me photos of their really beautiful yarn. And I told her, look at the paper, like, what does it say? 100% uh, acrylic. So I told her, no, I want, <laughs> I want a minimum of 50% of uh, natural fiber. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to do anything with it. When you start using yarns that are natural, it's just different. Yeah, and, and totally merino is like the softest. And when it's with silk, oh my God. It's, this one is uh, with a little bit of cashmere also. So it's, <laughs> I can sleep yeah. in, inside the balls of yarn. Yeah, so, so what, one of my favorite dyers right now is uh, Blue Fiber Company. And he has a this merino cashmere base that it, it's it's a magical yarn. It really is. It feels so amazing. There's nothing like touching a ball of yarn and feel the softness. It's like it's just <laughs> the best feeling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen, and that would be the last game for today. So we're gonna see a little quote and each of you is gonna select one. Okay, first quote. For to the bee, a flower is a fountain of life and to the flower, a bee is a messenger of love. And to both bee and flower, the giving and receiving is a need and an ecstasy. Ecstasy? Okay, Khalil Gibran. Uh, many people will walk in and out of your life, but only true friends will leave footprints in your heart. Eleanor Roosevelt. 
Uh, my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment and I told them they didn't understand life. That's by John Lennon. I look in your eyes. I really think you're fooling me. You're pretty and nice. It doesn't matter, don't you see? I'm falling in love. It happens to me every day. I'm falling in love. Love just seems to slip away. Scorpions. <laughs> It's a song. It's a song, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be funny to have like really heavy <laughs> quotations and then like <laughs> the scorpions. Okay, so which one did you relate to more? I, I would choose the John Lennon. I, I think I would as well. I like the first one. The first Alejo one? Gibran. I like giving and receiving. Yeah, that, that was the one that I was gravitating to as well. Just write your answers because now is the surprising part. You thought that you selected what you're going to do, but guess what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because right. it's a holiday, and because it's a gift, and oh, you still it so, for someone else. Remember oh. the, the gifts. So each of us is gonna gift the answer to someone else. <laughs> okay. So yeah, if if Jen you you chose brioche and Duke you chose uh, double knitting, so no, <laughs> that's not what you're gonna do. So. <laughs> Uh, Duke, select a gift. Um, the green one the green with green. a purple ribbon. So you're gonna give your uh, your answers to Jen. So tell her what's your answer, Jen. Write it down. Pottery from my sister. So that's gonna be like a motif or theme. Whatever, do whatever you want with it. What double was knitting. the technique? Double knitting. Double knitting. Easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Jen, it's easy peasy. <laughs> I've done it once, but it was many years ago. I'll have to refresh my memory. <laughs> it's, it's brioche, but a little different. <laughs> okay, and the quote was this one, right? That we see yeah. now? Okay. Giving and receiving. Uh, Khalil okay. Gibran. And your colors are green and purple. That I can work with. Okay. Jen, select the gift. Um, I'll do the purple and blue one. It's pink. It's oh, pink. pink. It's sure. Pink, blue, purple is pink. Ha! <laughs> It's Duke. Oh no, brioche cable. You can just do plain brioche. You don't have to do brioche cables. Okay. Make it easier for you. <laughs> so what was uh, the gift that you told us about? Uh, it was my earrings. Right, the leaf, the, the earrings. Leaf earrings. Shape with, yeah, and brioche. And the quote by John Lennon. John Lennon, love, okay. Okay, and your mm -hmm. colors are pink and blue. Okay. Scott, just don't select your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see, what colors do I want to have? Um, I, okay, so I'm gravitating towards the orange and yellow. It's, it's yellow and red. Okay. The But yellow yeah, and red. Okay. 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 Hates colors. You got yourself. I got myself. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you know that we're having to switch anyway. But we can switch. Yeah, let's switch. You can take, I, I will let you have the colors. Okay, I'll take the orange and yellow. Great. <laughs> okay. Red but uh, but the, your technique will be bubbles. And the gift that I got was the necklace that opens up. Yeah. A locket, yep. Yeah, and the quote is John Lennon. So my colors are gonna be 
yellow and green and scott the, okay and and the object is going to be the ring with diamonds the ring, uh mosaic okay and uh the the uh, khalil gibran right quote about right. the beat okay that was fun <laughs> right surprise <laughs> in the end yeah you switched <laughs> things up on us Oh yeah, because <laughs> I don't want you to know in advance. Like, yeah, you get, don't be too comfortable, you know? <laughs> <laughs> There's always been something. <laughs> okay, let's stop sharing. So that's it for this episode, I guess. We have all we need for uh, go and make our own next challenges. If the audience wants to participate in the challenge, should they just pick something, you know, a gift that they received and and uh, yeah. one of the techniques? Yeah. And the quotes. Say, and yeah. The quotes make a gift to us, you know, pick our theme. Right. And show us what you do because it's really fun. It's really fun to share the, the challenges. Well, okay. So it is the holidays. So... Uh, for whatever holiday you are celebrating, I hope it brings you peace and joy and light in this season and that you are well and that your families are well as, uh, also. It has been great to get together with you guys again. Um, I look forward to continuing this process and, and continuing to have fun. So everyone uh, have a lovely, wonderful time as we move into our seasons. Happy holidays. Happy holiday, Happy holiday, everyone. And subscribe and like and be Comment. active and play with us. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.